The first thing I notice when I wake up is a sharp pain in my right ankle. It's too dark to see anything, but it feels swollen and hurts like hell when I try to move it. There's no way I slept on this stone floor on purpose. Something bad must have happened. But what? I remember the drive out here. The miles of empty road beside the mountains. Open green fields stretching to the horizon. The ride alone would have been worth the trip, and as I got further up into the mountains, the view just got more and more stunning. The kind of drive where you have to pull over every 20 minutes and get out of the car just to take it all in. This camping trip was something I've been looking forward to for weeks. I got a backcountry permit, packed my hiking gear, and enough dry food to last the trip. I even had most of my hikes mapped out. Everything seemed set. The ranger at the park entrance told me that I came at the perfect time because it had been a really slow season that year. The trail should be nice and quiet, which is exactly what I've been looking forward to. I don't get too many chances to get out of the city these days, so the thought of having a place like this mostly to myself sounded perfect. I stayed that first night at the main section of the park since it was too late to hike further out. Even around there, where most of the visitors stay, the sites were practically empty. Early the next day, while it was still dark out, I packed up and started my first day of real hiking. It was a pretty casual trail. A few inclines here and there, but not much of a challenge. The hike on day two, however, was brutal. This is where things start to stray from the well-groomed trails and into the permit-only backcountry zones. By the end of that hike, it felt great to finally throw my backpack on the ground, kick my shoes off, and just stare at a campfire for a bit. As the fire slowly died down, the moon and stars were so bright I could still see to set up my tent. It doesn't even seem like the same night sky as the one from the city. Later on that night, I woke up to the sound of something rustling near my tent. My backpack was out there, so I needed to scare off whatever it was. Trying to be as quiet as possible, I grabbed my flashlight from the pocket of the tent, slowly unzipped the side, and stepped out. But by the time I got out there, whatever it was, was gone. And so was my backpack. My bag was heavy, even for me, so a bear is the only thing I can think of that could have dragged it away. Luckily, the bears around these parts aren't too aggressive. Usually they're just interested in your food, and you can scare them away by clapping or yelling. So I stood there, waiting for more movement, trying to figure out which direction it went. When I heard the rustling again, I took off in that direction, shining my little pocket flashlight into the woods. I could start to see something in the distance, but it wasn't a bear. I saw what looked like a tall man, completely naked, crouching down over my bag and rummaging through my stuff. Hey, I yelled. What the hell are you doing? Its head turned slowly. I could tell right away that this was no man. It was hairless, like a man. But its face was long and contorted. It was covered in blood from its mouth down to its chest. The thing locked its gaze on me stood up on its long, thin legs, and began sprinting in my direction. I ran, fast. I don't even remember which direction it was from the tent. I just ran into the woods as fast as my legs could take me. 
The soft forest floor was soon cut short by a rocky terrain as it ascended more into the mountains. I scrambled across some of the large rocks, hoping to get a lead on whatever it was that was chasing me. The last thing I remember is stepping into a patch of gravel, twisting my ankle, and then being thrown down between some large boulders into an opening of a small cavern. I can't believe I'm still alive. Maybe falling into this hole is enough to throw that thing off my tracks. The little keychain flashlight I grabbed is still in my pocket, and it works. Thank God. It doesn't look like I'll be able to climb back out through the hole in the ceiling, especially not with my ankle like this. And with that thing out there, I'm not even sure that I'd want to. So I limp around in the dark, looking for another way out. It's a tight squeeze, but I manage to slip through a crevice that opens up into a much larger chamber. Everything feels completely still here, with the exception of an occasional drop of water smacking the rocks. Thin columns of stalagmite reach up from the floor and cast intricate shadows that seem to dance across the walls as I scan with my light. Finally, I notice a thin horizontal crack that looks promising, so I hobble towards it and, yes, there's a slight breeze coming through. This must lead out to the surface, but it's going to be one hell of a tight squeeze. Laying down on my stomach, I begin to wiggle my way through and make it about four feet in before I hit a snag. I can see a wider opening if I can just get past this one section, but I can't seem to move my shoulder under this narrow bit. When I try to back out and change my approach, I realize, oh God, I'm stuck. Okay, don't panic. I just need to take a few deep breaths and try to use the wiggle room that I still have to pull free. But as I'm finally starting to feel some slack and gain enough space to move around, I see it. That long, pale face is staring back at me through the tunnel. I begin to panic. But in my struggle, I manage to pull myself back out into the room with all the stalagmite. As I make a run for it away from the tunnel, I turn around to see that creature squeezing through the crack into the cave with me. With every step, I can feel my ankle on the verge of collapse, but I was already out of steps. I finally back myself up against a wall and turn around to see that creature leaping in my direction. I can feel my ribs crack as it slams into me knocking my back against the jagged cavern wall. Its long, grotesque face opens to show an array of sharp, thin teeth as it wraps its entire mouth around my neck. My hands struggle to push the beast away, slipping across its face, which is now dripping wet with my own blood. The pain is almost too much to bear, and then... Nothing.